Welcome. If you're watching this on uh, demand later on the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel, then by all means, you know, be sure to um, give us a yeah, click for a like and make sure that you subscribe to the, uh, the to the channel. That's super. Thank you, Peter. Much appreciate you being here. Much appreciate being able to see that you can all hear and see me. Today, we're going to uh, talk about false breakouts, a, uh, a particular favorite little trading setup of mine that just uses simple price action, which is all that this series is entitled as is, uh, is fully, uh, fully immersed in about, you know, how to basically be able to use price action in your own trading to make better trading choices. Um, and <clears throat> before we dig into, let's say, the kind of the, the main thrust of the session, it would be great to know uh, those of you joining us here today. You know how many of you are uh, actively using price action as your uh, trading choices, and more importantly, uh, what if any experience have you of trading false breakouts? Are you completely new to trading and never heard of it before, or is it something you're aware of but not really sure how to to trade, uh, or maybe it's something that's that's already part of your let's say your trading armory. Be great to hear what your own personal experience is. Put it in the uh, the, the chat box. Would be uh, uh, fascinating to hear what uh, what your own personal experience um, has been. Uh, as always, you know I appreciate that uh, you know we have a broad range of experience of people who join the room, from complete beginners on their trading journey through to uh, intermediate and advanced traders. You're all very welcome. There'll all be something here for everyone to to take uh, on board. If you're uh, completely new to trading, okay, it's great for you to be here. Don't worry too much if, you know, if maybe some of it goes over a little bit at the top of your head. That's absolutely fine. We have to remember everybody here, myself included, was at the start of that journey at uh, one point. Uh, and the great thing about these sessions is that they're recorded. So uh, you'll be able to go and find them on the Admiral's YouTube channel and be able to watch them back in order to sort of uh, uh, recover and recap some of the aspects that we talk about here today. So remember, here we are, Admirals, a uh, Forex and CFD broker with uh, uh, basically global presence and local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and allowing you to engage with markets using both MT4, MT5, and also the Admirals Supreme Edition. If you have any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative uh, and they'll be very happy to uh, help guide you. So what are we uh, uh, what are we going to cover here again okay, in terms of well let's talk about what is price action trading because I appreciate that you know some people are completely new at the start of their uh, at the start of their trading journey and that's uh, that's absolutely fine as I said we were all there once okay we were all there once so you know you're very welcome here there'll be lots for you to, to learn and take on board but actually once you get an idea of it once you see it on a chart it'll never leave you so not unsurprisingly we're going to talk about well, you know, what is a false breakout? What actually constitutes one? Are they a threat or are they an opportunity? And I would hope by the end of this session that you'll probably be uh, thinking that they are more of the latter, that they are an opportunity. Not unsurprisingly, I'll talk about how can we trade them. And then if there's time at the end, what we'll do is we'll switch across to the live markets and look at how false breakouts have set up in uh, in live markets. I appreciate it always helps to be able to sort of transfer, you know, from what you see on our PowerPoint slide into what's actually going on in the uh, the live market itself. So uh, Elias says, uh, I don't understand what uh, what really is a uh, false breakout and, and a pullback. What's the difference? Uh, that's fantastic. Thank you for that. OK. That's what these sessions are for here in an effort to help educate you and give you a little bit of insight. What's the difference between a pullback and a false breakout? We'll be able to look at that on the charts and show you that. But that's a good question, good point, and I appreciate that. Peter says, uh, I love false breakouts and do use them in my trading. Still trying to improve on them, though. Don't get it right as often as I would like. There's nothing wrong in that, Peter. I appreciate that. Um, you know, yep, yeah, we can both share a love of uh, false breakouts, and I'll talk about you know how they are created a little bit uh, later on. Uh, you know, and I, I believe that they you know operate across all time frames and all instruments, uh, and that is actually a, a useful tool, a useful sort of setup to be able to to, to work with and uh, understand them. Uh, so don't get it right as often as you like. Well, just like any performance activity, Peter more you practice at it, the better you will become. <clears throat> uh, and uh, Elias says, you know, uh, thanks, and, and how can I watch your previous lessons? 
Um, that's uh, that's great. You know, it's a uh, it's a case of uh, what you'll find is on the Admiral's YouTube channel. OK, what you'll find is that there is a, a whole range of videos, not only from myself, but also from my uh, colleagues, Theo and uh, Jens as well. But this particular series, as we'll come on to in a slide or two, uh, has been going on for a while. And it's particularly aimed at helping people understand price action, being able to just look at markets through the prism of price action and help them sort of improve uh, better. So uh, they are, yes, they're all on the Admiral's YouTube channel. All the other session, 15 sessions are on there. Uh, and you know, and I uh, definitely commend people to go and watch them. All right, And there's something you can take away and learn from every single session to help every every session just make you a little bit better uh, a trader week after week. So for those who don't know me, my name is Paul. I've traded for many, many years, traded for funds, traded for clients. Uh, primarily, I like to focus on FX indices and commodities for myself. I tend to be a trend trader for a longer term trading, uh, trend trading uh, and then I tend to be a reversal trader for my shorter term trader. But, you know, a, a false breakout is a form of reversal and uh, I do like them when I see them. So, uh, yeah, as we sort of talked about today, we'll just continue this series based on helping traders understand and utilize price action in their traders, uh, in their trading. Uh, because for new traders, sometimes it's easy to be intimidated by the, the huge amount of knowledge, all right, that is out there, you know, on the, on the internet. And what happens is they sort of become overwhelmed and a little bit intimidated. But what we're trying to sort of show here is that just a little bit of education, a little bit of understanding of how, how price action works, how candlesticks are formed, what they're telling us, then it becomes easier to analyze and understand markets and trade with them and engage with them. So each Wednesday, we're just going to build upon the previous session so that you're educated and informed on how to use price action in your trading. And as I just said there before, all the previous ones are on the uh, uh, the Admiral's YouTube channel. So they're there. You know, be sure, go and watch them. Lots in there you can learn and take away from them. Uh, and for those of you just joining us for the first time, right, just trying to get to grips with trading and understanding what price action is. Well, price action trading it is just a very basic, simple means of market analysis using price movement over time. Uh, it is both popular with both uh, retail, private traders and institutional traders. And uh, what we're really doing is analyzing the change in prices over time. That's what the action is. Uh, and what we focus on in, in most in this session is focusing on price action over the last three to six months and beyond, uh, but also respecting longer term price movements and also shorter term intraday. And as I say every week, that's just because I recognize that the majority of people joining us here for our sessions, whether in live or watching our, on the uh, YouTube channel, you know that most of the people are, you know, they're not trading full time, they're trading part time around existing commitments. So they might have, you know, family, they might have work, okay, other commitments that, that they're running. And so actually they may be just sort of trading longer term, you know, in that time rather than being there in front of their screens all day, every day. But what you'll hear me always say is that. All of the ideas, setups, concepts that I share with you are all aimed towards you being a versatile trader. And I define that as being able to trade any instrument on any time frame in any direction. And price action, you know, and these concepts and setups I share with you will allow you to do that. And I think if you can do that, become that versatile trader, that is a, that's a great base to work from, okay, in your trading career, right? You know, there's a, it's, a, it's a fabulous... Um, place to operate from and it gives you a little bit of self-confidence and self-belief and as you trade longer in your career you'll realize that managing your own confidence and belief becomes uh, uh, crucially important so um, you know we've covered a fair bit already in our uh, series so far and what I've tried to do every week is is mix in what you might call the sort of the hard topics so things like you know actual price action setup so like engulfing candles star formations key reversals trading uh, inside bars pin bars etc rejection candles all of the kind of let's say the, the hard topics which is what new traders love to focus on but also with some of the softer topics right about understanding yourself understanding markets managing risk building a trading business so things like how you you know prepare for opportunities in markets, managing risk, how you manage your trades, whether you utilize checklists in your trading. And last week we talked about building a price action trading plan. So they're all there. Okay, we're covering both the, the whole days of the week, 
try and sort of uh, change it week on week to basically sometimes hard topics, sometimes soft topics, but there's plenty in there, all right? Plenty in there to take away and work with and start to learn and develop your own trading styles from. So, you know, I do commend that you go and watch them on the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk about false breakouts. But if you just quickly remember, first five steps, all right, we talked about last week here, as we start to focus more and more on building our own price action trading guide. Whenever we open a chart, first thing we're always going to do is define levels of support and resistance, monthly, weekly, daily. We'll do that a little bit later. That's it, monthly, weekly, daily. Those levels of support can be horizontal levels of support. They might be trend lines. They might be big round numbers, okay, which we will sort of just talk about as we go through and um, uh, develop that uh, skill set. Step two is we're going to look to see, is there a trend? And what you'll hear me always say is that a good trend leaps off the chart at you. You don't need to force it. You don't need to push it. What you have to realize, though, is the market's probably only trend 20 to 30% of the time. So if you're looking at a chart and you're struggling to work out whether there is a trend there, it probably isn't there. OK, it probably isn't there. Good trends leap off the chart at you. And if you're struggling to find to, to identify whether there is a trend in place, well, then just move on. OK, go and look at something else, because what we're trying to do is if there is a trend in place is we want to take an interest in step three is where does price? How does price react? at key support and resistance levels. Because if there is a trend, what we're going to be looking to do is we want to basically, you know, be buying, buying sort of uh, buying on pullbacks in an uptrend, selling rallies in a downtrend. And what we'll utilize is step four is we're looking for those price action triggers at those particular areas of interest. So things like we've covered in the past. So things like engulfing candles, inside bars, key reversals, pin bars, Fault breakouts, all right? They're all part of price action triggers that you can utilize. And what is also relevant is have a look at, is it part of a bigger chart pattern, which we haven't covered yet, but we will do in one of the future series about understanding the difference between continuation and reversal patterns. So as I said, there's the first five steps, very simple five steps that you can take away and utilize, you know, and, and it's about getting into a good routine. We talked uh, in previous sessions about having a checklist, about building good routines, these kind of things. That's what starts to help us. All right. It starts to, it might look like a bit of a soft topic that may be not of interest, but I assure you, the longer you trade, the more important this will become. So let's talk about false breakouts. All right. Now, you know, we heard uh, uh, before here they're saying that you didn't really know or understand what false breakout was. Peter saying that, you know, he really loves them. And okay, he likes to trade them. I myself really like them as well. But we're trying to understand what is the bigger picture when it comes to false breakouts. So what you will find is that there are many traders who like to trade breakouts of ranges as their main method. And the thing, there's nothing wrong with that, because when breakouts work, they work very, very well indeed but they don't work all of the time. And it's actually when a breakout fails that that can actually present us with an opportunity if you're educated and have some insight into how to, to trade when a breakout fails. So let's start for the complete beginners, how we uh, uh, you know, remind ourselves on the sort of two main trading styles. So what I talk about is, you know, you go on the internet, you know, or social media and start looking for trading strategies, trading methods, et cetera, you know, you will find that there are hundreds, perhaps thousands out there, okay? You know, you can actually get overwhelmed with the number of trading and investing methods that are out there. But generally, my view would be that most of them boil down to one of two particular styles. Effectively, what happens when you're coming to trading, you are trading either a break of a line of support or resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance. As simple as that. Now, those methods could be as complicated as you wish to be. I would suggest you keep them simple, but I do recognize that there are lots of very complicated trading systems out there. But ultimately, when you boil it down, keep it simple, you are trading a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a line of support resistance. That's what actually most of us are trading, all right? And the quicker you understand that, the quicker you can identify those particular opportunities for you. So, you know, very simply in terms of trading a break of a level of support resistance, you know, when we're on our charts, whatever it is, okay, you know, we want to be identifying, you know, areas of resistance, 
and also identifying areas of support okay and in this particular case you can see here over the uh, let's get the old drawing tool up here you know we can see here that basically you know price broke out here didn't it price broke out and continued in that downtrend and that's it you know we can see identify an area it might be a consolidation it might be a level all right of support resistance and when it breaks out and when that breakout works it works very very well all right and lots of people will love trading breakouts like that on the flip side, okay, as I said, if you're either trading a break of a line of support resistance or you're trading a bounce off the level of support resistance, uh, and this is, you know, an old chart of the euro dollar, okay, on the daily chart, very clear that price in a downtrend, remember what I said a bit earlier, don't force it, good trends leap off the chart at you, but as this trend, okay, has developed, price pulled back. Price never moves in a straight line, it always moves in a bit of a zigzag, being able to sort of understand that helps you and what we see here is that basically every time price pulls back even in the downtrend price pulls back and then it bounces off in this particular case levels of resistance okay now those levels of resistance might be what we'd call static in terms of you know levels of support resistance we've drawn in or it might actually be in the case of a dynamic which is how i would define things like a moving average where basically where we can see that there's a couple of places there where it's bounced off both of them together so remember, we're trading either a break uh, of the line of support resistance or a bounce off. And in this case, you've got a bounces off the 50 period moving average, which is operating as dynamic resistance. And for those of you new to trading, uh, the red line of mine is a 50 period moving average. OK, and that's what you'll find me utilize a lot. And we will talk about how to utilize moving averages in, with, with regards to price action in a, in a future session. So, you know, uh, what we see is, you know, and I always put this chart up because I always like it. It's an old weekly chart of the Kiwi dollar against Japanese yen, because actually this shows that, you know, in this particular case, price bounced, all right? Price bounced between 58 as a level of support and 69 as a level of resistance. And it bounced off those levels for, you know, almost four years, all right? There was lots of trading opportunities as that, as it bounced off. And then ultimately what happened is, like all things, it in the end, it broke out and continued in its trend, right? But for four odd years, okay, it was literally bouncing, okay? Bouncing off 69 uh, as resistance and then 58, all right, as a level of support. You know, and so it doesn't matter, you know, this is a weekly chart, all right? But this could be a five minute chart, all right? The, the price action revolves and acts the same, right? It's fractal in that sense. And so, you know, being able to recognize and understand this and see this, can be hugely beneficial and helpful to you as a, um, a as a trader. So uh, Elias says they don't you don't understand the difference. Well, you know what we can see here is that you know in this particular case here at the end price broke out of this level right which was sixty nine which was a level of previously had been a very significant level of resistance every time price had come up to it it bounced off comes up bounces off comes up bounces off. Here comes up, bounces off. Here bounces off, comes up here, and it actually breaks out. It breaks out above sixty nine. It holds above sixty nine, and then what we see is price continues. All right, price continues in its new existing trend all the way up. So that's what we're looking at, and that's what we're understanding is that most trading methods can be boiled down to either a break of a line of support resistance or a bounce off a level of support and resistance. So the things about, you know, uh, both of those kind of trading styles, they both have their pros and cons, right? No, no one is, not one is particularly better than the other. They both have, you know, their, their good points and their bad points. A lot of people like to, to trade breakouts. Some people prefer to trade bounces. Uh, I personally prefer to trade bounces as part of a pullback in a trend, which is what we'll uh, talk about a little bit more in a few slides time. The reason being is that it gives me an opportunity to enter at a better price. And this might sound strange, but if I'm going to be wrong on my trade, I know I'm wrong far sooner. OK, and that suits me. If I'm wrong, I'd sooner know quick as possible so I can basically get the trade done out of it and then move on to the next trade. So I particularly like to trade bounces. But what I also do is I love to trade a breakout when it fails, all right? When a breakout fails, because really what's happened is the breakout has failed, 
it has now become a bounce of that particular area, that particular level, which is what suits me anyway. So let's go into that in a little bit more depth. What I talk about from my own personal experience from trading for many, in many years is that breakouts fail all the time. As I said, when they work well, they really do work well, but they fail an awful lot of the time. And I particularly believe from my own experience is that they, you know, they fail a great deal in FX markets. So if you're a breakout trader and your breakout trade has failed, well, for many breakout traders, that means it's a failed trade, okay, you know, so they've taken a loss and they have to move on. However, for a patient and educated price action trader, it actually, that failed breakout offers us an opportunity. So what we're going to talk about now is like, well, how do we utilize that as an opportunity? How do we trade these false breakouts, which sometimes you'll hear other traders call fake outs? It's just you know shortened shortened way of talking about a false breakout. Okay, doesn't I don't I don't really um I don't really care too much how you label it. All right, what I care about is that you can understand the concept. That's the that's the important thing for me. So here is a simple false breakout short setup. Right, this is this is what we're going to be looking at and trying to understand. Um, we're going to be looking at the daily chart. Okay. Um, you will find that this happens across all time frames, but as I said, I'm just for purposes today, we'll just focus mostly on the daily chart. There'll be one or two others, but mostly on the daily chart, because as I said, I recognize that a lot of the people joining us, they are trading around their, you know, their day job, okay, their lifestyle commitments, their family. So they might only have a little bit of time at the start of the day, at the end of the day, to I do analysis and identify a trade. Well, you know, this sets up, you know, perfectly for it on the sort of the daily and also the weekly chart as well. So what we have is we have a daily chart, okay? And what we're looking for is a minimum, all right? A minimum of two touches of resistance, all right, for the short setup. Now, preferably, okay, the more touches, the better, you know, preferably three to four touches, but we don't, you know, we don't always get what we want in markets. If we have two touches of resistance that are very clear, then that is enough. What we need to see is we need to see price break the level. However, it ends up with a bearish close below the level. That's the important thing. It's even better if it would be something like a bearish rejection candle, because then that has created a false breakout. And what we're looking to do is we're looking to sell the next day if we're trading this on a daily chart. In this particular case here, what we can see is, you know, price, price has, you know, rallied its way up. And then, you know, we have price going up to this high level. And the next day, all right, comes up to that level again, doesn't it? All right, and it drops away, but we have a bullish close. It then touches it again here. Price comes up to that high there. So, you know, there is clearly a level of resistance there, clearly a very strong level of resistance. And some people would have already taken a short position based on that. But on the fourth day, or sorry, you know, the fourth touch here, we get basically price tries to push up above it. It can't. And then what happens is price rolls over and collapses and closes and closes you know, much, you know, beyond the lows and the close of their previous candles. That is definitely confirming that we have, you know, a false breakout, that we have a rejection candle. In this case, it's, you know, it's a bearish engulfing candle. It's a very clear, very clear telling us that, you know, for whatever reason, price is not going any higher than this level at all. And then what we see is that basically price drops away there for, uh, for the next one, a daily chart was up for about the next nearly two weeks of trading days. And, and that's what we're looking for, like for a simple false breakout short setup. We've got quite a few examples here. So, you know, we're just, as I said, we're looking for a minimum, two touches of resistance, all right? You know, and it should be quite clear, right? As I said, once again, don't force it, don't push it. You know, we had touches there, touches there, touches there. The final touch, it tried to go higher, just even by a couple of pips, but it rolled over and fell away. Price, just the energy has gone, you know, the price has rallied up and now it's getting ready to roll over and fall away. We want to be shorting that because price can't go any higher. It's a false breakout. Think about it. All the all the breakout traders here, okay, probably above this level, who've probably got their uh, their buy orders in, etc., and probably all you know from around this zone at all, all doing that, and then invariably those orders are getting eaten up. Those, but the price isn't price isn't carrying on, 
price is going sideways. It doesn't have the energy to continue in its upward trend. And then when we get this final candle here, which is a real bearish rejection candle, you know, the, 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 you know, the uptrend is over and we're now starting to roll over and fall away. And that is exactly what, uh, that is exactly what uh, happened in that particular case. Uh, you know, and what we have here is just a couple of examples. This is um, uh, the US dollar against Canadian dollar. It, you know, it has been clearly in, you know, in a uh, in a significant downtrend there. Okay, in a significant downtrend, price basically rallies up. Uh, you know, and then you're looking at is this is this a pullback? Is it a retrace? Is it a reversal? But what we see is that as prices pull back, it does this again. Okay, touches these levels, but it can't go any higher. It closes beneath those levels. And then it finishes with that, as I said, with that bearish, strong bearish rejection candle before price falls away. Uh, and actually what we see is we'll come on to later as price comes down here. It has a couple of touches at this level and then comes back to it. All right. And actually there's a false up bullish false breakout before price moves away. So as I said, with a little bit of experience, a little bit of practice, and we're going to go into more and more examples. We'll start to get a hang of, you know, what it looks like to see false breakouts, you know, just a simple false breakout setup. Um, so this was uh, on the euro against the Japanese yen here. OK, what we can see is that, uh, you know, price had been in a very nice uptrend, very nice uptrend. OK, and price had put in a new high here before it fell away okay Perhaps nothing wrong with that but then what we see is price comes back to that level and this day on this particular case it comes back and touches it but it closes beneath it so you know it's effectively prices you know it's forming like a double top it's forming a false breakout the next day okay it tries to go higher but it still closes beneath that level still closed beneath that level and then on this kind of third day we see price, you know, try to push above that level, try to push above that resistance level, but it completely closes beneath it. All right. And also what we've printed there is not only have we had a, had a false breakout, but we have basically closed beneath the, uh, the that level. And it's also that is a rejection candle. It's a pin bar candle. And what we can see is that price drops all the way back down until, until another area here where it actually touches, you know, before it bounces off it there. So, as I said, fault breakouts, uh, you know, they don't happen as much as I would like them to, but when they do happen, all right, then invariably they are generally tend to be very, very good trading opportunities. You know, if you're trading on something like the weekly, the daily, even the four hourly charts, you know, you get time to see these set up, you get time to, uh, you know, identify what's going on, you get time to basically set your trade up, you know, work out where your entry is, work out where your stop loss is, work out where your particular target can be, okay, all of those are important elements. And in this particular case, you know, when we have a, you know, when we have things like this, like a, a short fault breakout, well, you know, to begin with, what we say is, you know, is that basically once the trade opens there, when, you know, we're trading the, the break of the low, our stop loss would go above the, the high. And then we're looking for at least, you know, two to one in terms of our reward to risk or alternatively down to the sort of next significant, um, in this case, support level. <clears throat> Uh, Tree says, in this setup, how long would you have held the, your position? Well, um, it, you know that in itself is a uh, that in itself is a session on its own. Trees in terms of you know reward, how long do we hold the trade for? Um, because basically, we can either utilize a, a target or have a trailing stop. And um, personally, as an ex-military guy, I like to hit a target. Okay, I tend to utilize a target because that's what I like to hit. And what I normally suggest is that. You'll hear me talk about having an asymmetric reward to risk ratio. So, you know, if I'm risking 100 euros, I want to be able to make 200, 300, 400 in return. But what I normally say to traders is, you know, at least two to one. Okay, if you're able to sort of generate two to one, all right, reward to risk on your trades. Okay, that is a great place to be. And as you get better at picking better trades and you start to nudge your uh, uh, hit rate higher up, well, then, you know, that puts you in a very, very good position. If you know, if you're right, um, you know, if you're right, uh, you know, if you're generating a reward to risk of two to one, all right, well, then invariably anything more than sort of 40 percent hit rate, anything more than being right four times out of 10, well, you're breaking even anything above that. You're starting to generate revenue for your trading business. So uh, that's what I uh, normally suggest. OK, look at uh, two to one. But. You know, the important thing is, is being able to identify that kind of false breakout setup, understanding, you know, trading the break of the low, stop loss above the high, and then identify about two to one in terms of your reward to risk for the trade. I hope that uh, helps uh, answer that question, Teresa. Uh, 
so you know there was a couple of examples of of a short okay a false breakout short setup let's have a little look at the other side of the coin which is a simple false breakout long setup okay that's a which is a very quick um the reverse of it and stuff so you're very welcome trees so this is for a long setup you know we're looking to buy once again just looking at the daily chart we're looking for a minimum of two touches of support right minimum of two touches of support preferably three or four the more the merrier but we only really need to see two okay we only need to see two but you know the more is the merrier what we need to see is that price breaks that level that level of support okay in this particular case price breaks that level of support during the session but actually price reverses and it closes a bullish close okay a bullish close above that level that we have identified so what we have seen is you know is that effectively price has been here to this level price has come down and tried to break through it it can't all right the breakout has failed and basically what we see in that case is price you know has a very bullish close above that level and you know if it's a rejection candle which is normally like you know has a big whip even better but what we have created there is there's a false breakout of that level okay it tried to break out okay it couldn't and then what we're looking to do is next day you know we'll be looking to buy right we want to be a buyer you know trading above a, a break above the high stop loss beneath the uh the low and as i was just saying aiming for about two to one in terms of you know in terms of your trade targets your reward to risk as i said some people like to use trading stops and that's absolutely fine i have no issue with that okay and um, what's more important is that you know you you know where you're getting in you know where you're getting out if you're wrong all right and you're having a uh you have the opportunity to generate uh, asymmetric reward to risk that's that's the bit we're really particularly interested in so you know based upon based upon looking at that you know based upon what we've covered so far do you think that you'd be able to look and identify that on you know on any chart you know you you, you probably already have a particular favorite instrument or favorite time frame but the reality is even though we're focusing on the daily chart this setup you know it occurs across all time frames across all instruments the challenge you'll have is that if you trade it on a shorter time frames let's say you know 15 minute five minute one minute you know there, there's nothing that you know there's no rule of thumb i can give you that you know it says well you know nine o'clock on a tuesday morning is when most faults breakouts set up you know if you're going to trade it let's say on an intraday basis you have to be there sat in front of the screens which is why looking at it let's say on the daily and the weekly chart you can very quickly identify you know if you're looking at your charts if you're doing your analysis in the evening or if you're doing your analysis first thing in the morning you can do your analysis identify where the false break is and, and as i said take some time to get ready to understand you know where your entry is going to be where your stop loss is going to to go you know and where your target would be so that you can actually just you know take a few minutes put the trade on and uh and you know work away Um, so yeah, just examples here: dollar against Japanese yen. You know, price is doing all sorts here. But what we see is price drops down to this level. It actually puts in you know one touch here, two touches there. Okay, which is also and this becomes interesting as well. It was also around about the the one hundred five you know uh, big round number. But what we see is price bounces off it. Price comes back down to test it. And what we see is that it invariably is that you know price basically uh, it pushed through that level, but during that day, it can't stay above it, uh, stay below it rather, and actually price comes all the way back up and closes. It's a very, very bullish close there. And, you know, that's a big candle, all right? That's a very big candle, I would admit. But, you know, what we want to see is be able to identify the, the, the concept, namely that we've seen that, you know, there's a level there that price has rejected in the past. Price comes down to it, okay? It gets it, it breaks through it. And if you think about, well, what's happening when it breaks through is, it's probably triggering lots of short orders, okay? Lots of short orders, all right? Or people who bought here, their stop losses are there as well, all right? So, you know, it basically puts through there, clatters its way through some of those orders, soaks up some of that order, some of that um, liquidity, and then before and uses it almost like as a, uh, as a uh, you know, as a spring to, to basically to push itself up. And we can see that invariably 
bosch that's where price went to for a uh, for a good while there right you know and so it is about as i said we just you know on a daily chart looking to see where we've had a, you know a level where we've had one or two touches as i said it could also be a, a big round number in terms of like that case 105 and watching to see how does price come back to react to that all right that can be a very as i said very very useful right okay price comes down to that level again breaks it but comes back up and closes that day is a very bullish close all right above that level that's showing us that it soaked up the orders here and now we're getting ready to to fire up that short breakout has failed we've had a false breakout now get ready to go long that's what we're looking for um, you know, this is an example here on the euro against the US dollar on the daily chart. And once again, you know, we're looking at big round number here, 110. All right. Triple zeros. OK, double zeros, triple zeros. They are uh, they are interesting levels. OK, you know, and on a daily chart, you know, you can draw them in as part of your analysis and work them out. OK, so uh, <clears throat> on one level, you know, what we have is, you know, price coming up to that particular level there. You know, you can see there's a kind of a bit of a false breakout there. But more interestingly, what I'm interested in at the moment is that kind of 110 level is this is not necessarily a false breakout by our rules. All right. But we can see price gets above 110, comes back down, can't get beneath 110, closes bullish above it as a pin bar and off it shoots. Price comes back down to that level, touches a couple of days, but then what do we get? Tries to push beneath 110, but it can't. And actually what we get is a bullish close above, all right, a back above that level. And then what we see is price moves on for the next couple of days. Price comes back down to retest it, doesn't it? All right. And what we see is here is we get, you know, price tries to push down, but actually what we get is a you know strong bullish close back above that 110 level this is you know it's a rejection candle it's a pin bar and what we see is price basically rockets it away up there right from 110 to 120 uh, and then we see price comes back down to that 110 level again here and you know what we see is that invariably you know we get pushes to that level again to that 110 and closing back above the area above the level before we sort of push our way back up right now admittedly you know that just hits that 50 period moving average but there is still you know a two to one trade there in uh, in the space and, and that's what we're interested in is okay just identifying those levels where price, you know, has responded and reacted in the past and been able to look at utilizing just trading false breakouts from that. OK, those areas are those areas are always there. And, you know, and as part of your doing, you know, we talked about the trade price action trading plan. Part of you doing that is when, you know, you're working and you start to identify these particular areas and levels. So you're ready for it on, on longer time frames. Um, here's an example on Oz. Yeah, this is uh, one. This is from a little while ago, but it actually, it was the interesting. It was because it was the day of the uh, the U.S. elections. Okay, so that was about what eighteen months or so ago. Uh, and what we had was that this was the Aussie against the U.S. dollar, uh, and you know, not only was it the uh, U.S. election, but we also had uh, the big round number, you know, treble zero. Okay, uh, point uh, point seven treble zero, which we can see. Price had pushed down to this level before and bounced off it. Price bounced off it here. Price came down, okay, and bounced off it here. And this, you know, this day here was the day of the uh, uh, U.S. elections, right? Okay, price pushed beneath that 0 0.7, treble um, 0 level, okay, uh, pushed beneath it before rallying strongly during that day and, you know, a very strong bullish close above that level. Uh, and what happens is, well, you can see for yourself, okay, where that price price ran to, okay, it ran very, very strongly for, for you know, the next six weeks or so. So, you know, I said, it's a, it's a simple setup, all right, it is a simple setup, you know, and, and practicing it as part of just doing your analysis, you know, you start to identify, and as I keep saying, on the longer time frames, it will give you the opportunity to basically just to, to sort of see these starting to set up you can get ahead of yourself identify you know those setups when they occur look where your entry will be look where your stop loss will be you know and and find your target as well uh, and this is just yep, an example on pound against us dollar uh, once again this was the uh, this is 125 okay big round number 125 price had come down to it and bounced off it and then what we saw is price comes back down to the area that day here, okay, what it does is price comes all the way back down to this area where we've had these touches before. It basically tries to push beneath it, but it 
can't hold and basically springs all the way back up closes above the you know higher than it's opened it's a very bullish close there's a real rejection candle there at uh, the actual next day carries on and that then also becomes like a morning star formation as well it's, you know it's yeah if you want more confidence but you can see that basically price rallies all the way up there to the 200 period moving average and beyond all right so as i said you know it once you're in there drawing these levels identifying them it starts to give you an idea okay of when you, you know where you can see likely areas of uh interest you know will set up beforehand so you know as i said if you're looking at these on the longer time frames you can look at them at the the weekly chart or the daily chart uh, and identify those levels and areas and get yourself get yourself uh, ready for that <clears throat> okay so oops there we go so um, I'm hoping you can still uh, see and uh, hear me. Here we go. The uh, I think we might have a little bit of an issue there with the uh, Zoom. I don't know if it's sort of just uh, dropped its uh, dropped its way out there. I'm just uh, watching. Certainly the controls. I'll just uh, bear with me one second, all right? Just in case the uh, um, someone has popped us out of Zoom. Okay, so um, I'm hoping I'm just going to carry on this. I'm hoping that it's uh, the Zoom is still working. You know, just a couple of final thoughts and conclusions, then we'll have a little look at the uh, live chart for the last couple of minutes. Uh, is that to help with new traders? Um, what you might want to do is you might want to look for false breakouts in the direction of an already established trend. And what do I mean by that? Just uh, bear with me. Let's just um, here we just let's just bring it up. Yep, I'm hoping that's still that's still all there. Just uh, off my uh, screen that it just basically dropped off. Here we go. Excellent. You know, hopefully what we've got there is, as I said, in this particular case, let's bring up the drawing tool. We can see that price is already in a clear downtrend. Right, it's beneath its averages. Price, you know, price puts in a false breakout here. All right, and rallies up for a few days. Puts in, you know, a touch here, touch here, and drops. But then when it comes back to it, okay, this basically touches this level down here. This is the important way. Push tries to push above this level here, but it can't hold to join that day. It falls back. There's a real bearish close beneath that level. You know, this is a, a pullback in a downtrend, and that is the opportunity to sort of basically trade, enter short, you know, at the start of the next day when it breaks lower uh, with your stop above the high. And you know, as I said, normally I would be going for a two to one reward to risk, but you can actually see, you know, for those of you who like to sort of trail your stops, that trend, that trade actually worked out, you know, very, very nicely uh, indeed. So if you're just trying to help yourself with trying to, you know, get on board and understand false breakouts, it might be something that, you know, in an established trend when price pulls back, if there was a false breakout there, okay, that might be a way for you to join that sort of existing dominant trend, just something to sort of take on board and uh, uh, think about so in conclusion ladies and gentlemen before we switch across to the charts many traders love to trade breakouts however many breakouts fail especially in the fx space a failed breakout offers an opportunity for savvy traders i suggest you start off on the daily charts you can take your time identifying those levels all right just seeing how price reacts to that but you will find, okay, once you start to identify false breakouts, they happen across all instruments and all time frames. We're looking for at least two, two to four touches of a clearly, you know, clearly identified level. Wait for price to break the level, but close back the other side of that level as your trigger. And then effectively you're looking to, you know, trade the next day. Okay, the, the break of the candle, stop loss the other side of that candle, and at least a two to one target. So with that in mind, let's have a little look at the uh, charts for a couple of minutes. Um, just to finish off, just to remember that, um, you know, our uh, our price action trading guide is every Wednesday, next Wednesday, 25th of January. Come and join me again, because what I'm going to be doing is combining the price action setups. Right. What that means is that some of those price actions that we've looked at, OK, in the past, things like false breakouts, pin bars, engulfing candles, key reversals, inside bars, what happens when you combine a few of them together? How do you utilize that as a, as a useful trading tactic? And how can you actually trade them? So that's next next Wednesday, 25th of January, 2 p.m. London time. 
check your inbox for the webinar link or head over to the uh, Admiral site to, to register for that uh, particular session. If you want to get in touch with Admirals, you can do it. Okay, you can see there the email there address is there. And as I said, this session and all the other ones are on the uh, Admirals YouTube channel and also on the Admirals Facebook channel as well, should you wish to uh, watch that. So we've got just a couple of minutes left, okay? Just a minute or two left. So what we'll do is we'll switch across to the chart. So just have a look at one or two quick ones that have come up here, okay, in the last couple of days, just to show you, you know, as I said, just looking at it in a live condition. So just bear with us one moment and we'll uh, we'll bring it, we'll bring that up. Here we go. Just bear with us one second. Here we go. Bang. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I hope you can still hear me, still see me. I hope you can now see the uh, Admiral's uh, MetaTrader platform I have here. Uh, let's have a little look here, okay? So we, this is Wednesday. We had a lot of, uh, let's say, volatility on the Japanese yen pairs. So this is my Japanese yen profile. I'm just going to bring up the dollar Japanese yen here. Okay, here you go. This this is a good, this is a, an interesting example here is that um, what we had here. Now, the first one is actually is more a case of uh, you know central bank intervention, right? But it's still what we saw was price it hit the 150, 150 level, right? Big round number. Price had come up to the level, uh, and then it basically tried to break out, but it couldn't, and then it closed all the way back beneath it, right? All the way back beneath that level. Now, admittedly, that was down to Japanese uh, central bank intervention. But you can see for yourself that actually price fell away there, right? Absolutely fell away. And we were talking about, you know, in a, uh, a trends in a in a pullbacks in a downtrend. But what we actually had here is what we can see here is you've got the big round number at 130 here. Price had come down here to this level and it bounced off it and fell, came all the way back up. That in itself was, you know, a, a false breakout of the big round number at 130. And price had sort of, bounced its way up here, back up to this level here. But what we can see is price tried to push up, but it couldn't. It fell down and printed a really strong bearish candle. Uh, and what we've seen there is that price has just continued down there, as we've seen in that particular case, that that element of a dollar weakness and Japanese yen strength. So that was just, you know, a, an example, a couple of examples there on the uh, the US dollar. Uh, I think I was looking also and trading on the uh, euro, was it euro yen as well? Okay, on I wanted to show on just a very different example here, just to finish off. Uh, yeah, here's the euro yen. This is the monthly chart, all right? It happens across all time frames, all instruments. Once you start to learn to see it, a couple of years ago, what we had was price was in a great downtrend. Price, you know, identified this level around about one sixteen. Price, you know, bounced off it the first time, but when it comes down to it, the next time we get a rejection candle. But the next candle really does, you know, really just tells you this is a false breakout. Try to push to that low all the way through that month, it came back up, closed really high, very, very bullish close, the other side of the level that we've had a false breakout from, and price, as you can see for yourself, rallied for a couple of years from there, right? from you know, one, from about 119 up to about 147, 149, okay? So as I said, it happens across all time frames, all instruments, what we need to just basically do is be able to sort of, you know, spend a bit of time practicing seeing this, and then as soon as you do that, well, then, then you're in a position to, to identify and trade uh, a false breakout. So um, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, we've run out of uh, time. You know, time flies when you're having fun. I appreciate I could have probably spoke about different types of false breakouts all afternoon. But what we want to do is just share a simple one, a price action based false breakout, simple one that you can utilize, take away, look at it on the daily charts. If you can identify it on the daily charts where you're not under the sort of minute by minute pressure, like on an intraday chart, if you can identify the action the setup, that's a great place to start, okay? Get it in. Because once you recognize it, once you practice it enough, it will click and you'll be able to see it and recognize it, as I said, across all instruments on all time frames. all right? I appreciate some of you might be five minute euro dollar traders others might be you know weekly traders on bitcoin okay once you identify the concept all right once you identify the setup of a, of a simple fault breakout then you, you know you will you'll never not be able to see it and that will provide you with opportunities you know for well forevermore okay because there are always false breakouts especially within those fx markets so 
I, uh, I hope you found that uh, useful, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that's given you just a little bit of insight, a little bit of help. As I said, this will be on the uh, Admiral's YouTube channel, so you can watch it again and again and again to get clear on the uh, the, the rules and the idea behind the concept. Um, as always, okay, you know, what we'll see is there'll be a little bit of a feedback form that will come out after today's session. Really appreciate it if you just take a moment just to fill that in. Uh, and, you know, as I said, next week, Wednesday session, we'll be looking at combining price action setup. So be sure to join us Wednesday, 25th of January, London, two o'clock. Uh, and in the meantime, I just want to wish you the best of success in your own trading endeavors. Uh, and I look forward to speaking to you soon, everybody. Trade well. Cheers. <laughs>